and welcome to Knit Pug. I'm Karen, also known as Jade Knitter, and the pug half has scampered off. <laughs> I think he's gone to find something to kill. Um, toy wise, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't go after the real animals. Um, so it is the 14th of March, which is International Pie Day. Because you know, three point one four. Um, there you go. And this is episode 16, I believe. I'm not sure. I've been a little lax recently just because with all the crazy going on at work, I haven't felt up to it. So I'm back. And as you can see, we're in a new location. Um, this is my crafting corner. And it is literally a corner in my living room. Um, yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. So, like I said, I'm Carrie, also known as Jade Knitter, and you can find us, so Knit Pug, on YouTube, uh, iTunes, and the blog, all under Knit Pug, and the blog's knitpug.com, and you can find me on Ravelry, uh, Instagram and Twitter, all under Jaded Knitter. And please come join our Ravelry group. Gadget, you coming? Maybe? He might come make an appearance. He might not. We'll see. Um, okay. Come here. Pug! Who is now going to wander off? Uh, so yeah, like I said, new craft corner. Um, this is the opposite corner of the living room from where I have been sitting, and this is where my yarns. Well, I'm saying this is where my yarn stash is going to go, but let's be realistic: a portion of my yarn stash is going to fit here. Um, there are actually bins under the table behind me. Full of yarn. There are bins over there full of yarn. Okay, there aren't as many bins over there anymore and most of the stuff under the table is partials. I'll just shut up now. Because uh, <laughs> there will be stash acquisitions later on in the show. Um, so that's foes. I don't have any. Um, but I do have one that was made for me. This was made by my lovely, lovely Aunt Adele. Hi, Adele. Um, and as you can all see, it's green and it's sparkly because it's got sequins in it. Um, the pattern is actually called Adele's Scarf, uh, which I think is, is perfectly appropriate. Um, and she made me this for my birthday. So I've been wearing this quite a bit recently. <laughs> I've worn it to work, I've worn it out. It's great. Because it's, it's squishy and it's sparkly and it's me. Let's be realistic, it's green, it's me. Um, so what have I been knitting on? Well, uh, um, let's pull things out here. I don't remember what all I had where. I will get to this in a minute. This is part of the stash. Um, I think I had had these on the needles. This is a pair of Entrelac socks. Because I'm not insane enough. Um, I've completely forgotten what the rainbow yarn is. It's big box store sock yarn. Um, and oops, I pulled it out. This is currently um, in the naughty corner. Because I've had to rip it out several times. It, it took me a lot of tries to get the toe right. And then I screwed up on the entrelac portion a couple of times. And yeah. Yeah. So it, it's currently in the naughty corner. We'll just we'll put it back down there. And this is actually um, one of my Bags by Awesome Granny bags. That she sent, and it is wonderful. This is, I think, this is one of her medium ones. Yes, it would be because the I don't know if you can see it or not, but the big one's sitting back here. 
with all my other bags. It's my bag of bags at the moment. Um, this is the other. Uh, what are we doing? Runway out. Of course, I'm in the middle of a row because I wouldn't have it any other way. This is my ink cardigan. Um, and as you can see, it has sleeve. Well, it has sleeve caps anyway. Um, I'm past the the sleeves, so I am. Oh shit! I don't have to fix that. I dropped a stitch. Um, I'll fix it later. So I'm currently going round and round for a couple of inches before I start more patterning on the front. I'm still enjoying this. It is. Um, I'm finding it a quick and easy. Well, it's not quick, but I'm finding it an easy knit. Um, I'm doing it out of its. Valley Yarns, I think it's Claremont. It's their Merino um, Cashmere, it's an MCN. Um, and <coughs> when I did it, I didn't have anything that I could easily do the sleeves with, like to hold the stitches. And I hate putting it on the same size yarn, because this is done in, uh, fingering and all I had on me was fingering weight yarn. So what I actually did, I don't know how well you'll be able to, you should be able to see better from this side because you can see the bright green. Um, I actually bound off all of the stitches uh, for the arm in, well in this case a, a very contrasting color and I just tied it at both ends um, because that will hold the size of the stitches Whereas if I just put a thread through it, it won't hold it as well, I found. But I find that this works quite well and it's easy to pick up because I can go through and I just, I start at the end and un, you know, unpick the knot and then just slowly pull, uh, pull it back out again. I did that on both arms. So this is moving along. I haven't touched it in a little while, but it is definitely moving along. Oh good, that's... There's a little bit of vegetable matter that looked an awful lot like a moth <laughs> in the middle of the... No, it, it was just, it was bark or something. Plant material, it was plant material. Um, so that is two of the projects I've had on the go. This is, you guys will probably recognize this yarn Notice how small the thing is, that's because this is a sleeve. I'm finally on the sleeves. That's the first sleeve. I haven't started the color work on it yet. Um, so this is Rose's sweater. And it is, she has tried it on, fits wonderfully, she loves it. And I'm, in, I'm still enjoying it. Um, so this is it is now up to, this is the armpits. So I have to do both sleeves and then I will start on the yoke. So I'm enjoying this and this is one of those nice felty yarns. So I can uh, not have to worry too much when I steak it. Uh, so like I said, I was doing this. Uh, and then that is out of this book, uh, which is Knitting with Icelandic Wool, and it is by Venice Jon's Daughter. Um, and I've said it before, it is, it's a really nice book, well written. Um, it definitely falls to the European style of writing patterns, which end up having less uh, sizes than the North American patterns, which I'm fine with. Um, but some people want those extra patterns because they don't want to have to do the math. So if you don't want to have to do the math and you don't fit into those standard size ranges of small, medium, large kind of thing, don't buy that book. Uh, <laughs> those are for after. Uh, what else? Okay. Nope, that's stash. More stash. Oh, there it is. I knew I had one other thing. These are... Ground. Yeah, what you can't see off camera is you can't see the coach that is right here and the mound of stuff that is on the coach and the mound of stuff. That's it. 
Yeah. <laughs> or the stuff that's like right under the camera because I just kind of pushed up out of the way. To... I'm slowly getting things set up but there's still piles everywhere. Okay most of the piles around here are the crafting supplies but still. Um, this is, believe it or not, a pair of socks or a sock. Yeah, that, that, the face you're probably making was the face, well, realistically is the face that I'd be making for a while. Um, this is one of those patterns. It is really well written. It's out of a really nice book. Um, and I will, nope, I forgot the name of the book. So I, I didn't bring the book, so I will review the book next week. Um, but yeah, anyone who has ever knit the baby surprise jacket knows exactly what I'm talking about when I say that this looks absolutely nothing like these. This is the, the pattern. They're the smoky zigzag socks and it's by Natalia Vesleva. Um, and it is, it's out of socks any which way and I think it's Ann Budd who's the uh, editor on that one from Interweave and it's what you come to expect from Interweave really well written book great pictures great diagrams the whole nine yards but this is one of those patterns and I'm notorious for not following patterns this is one of those patterns where you just you blindly follow it this is why I'm likening it to the uh, the baby surprise jacket by Elizabeth Zimmerman that's one of those things you just you knit it and you have no idea quite how it's going to go together in the end and then somehow you end up with a baby jacket well this will turn into a pair of socks I believe this is the heel and I know down here somewhere will be a toe uh, <laughs> so it it will eventually fold around I'm assuming um, but we shall see how this progresses because it will progress and like I said it is it's a really well written pattern and as long as you follow the directions you have to read each section through and actually follow what it says step by step don't skip anything don't try and skip ahead don't think just follow the directions and it works perfectly it, it's beautiful in the way it works if you try and skip ahead or you know assume you know what the directions are going to say, kind of like I normally do, it does not work and you end up having to rip back a lot or tink. So these are going to be really neat. Um, these are done out of um, one of Janet who's the Fiberholic on Ravelry and Crazy Dog Yarns on Etsy. Um, it's done out of one of her colorways. Um, and I had the name like 30 seconds ago and I've forgotten it. It will come back to me probably after I've hit stop. Um, but it is one of her colorways that is currently up. It doesn't really matter. All of her colorways look at these, this pattern. And if you look up the pattern on the Smoky Zigzag socks on Ravelry, the actual pattern page for these, picture number two is done out of Janet's yarn. So I'm doing that and anyone who's, uh, I'm bringing these uh, to show uh, as one of the display models for uh, Janet's booth at Twist in August. So if anyone wants to see them, they can see them there uh, in person. And I will also hopefully have a finished pair at the Kitchener Waterloo uh, Guild meeting next week or next month. We'll see. I might not, but like I said, we'll see. Uh, everything else that I've done. So like I said, that's what they will look like eventually. I'm still not entirely sure how they've got, how they get there. I think I know, but I'm not entirely sure. But like I said, follow the pattern. So far it seems to be working. It hasn't led me wrong. Um, the only other thing I've been working on at all, and this is take three, is you guys probably can't see that very well but this is the queen susan shawl i'm not going to show it because it's like less than an inch there isn't enough there to show um but i've restarted it again so we'll see 
Lucky number three. If it doesn't work, I'm done. I quit. I give up. I will knit something else. Um, so yeah. So on to, that's all I'm knitting. There will be more next week because there'll be more knitting next week. Um, actually, and I will do this now before I forget again and before I toss stuff elsewhere. Um, over the years of podcasting, um, I've had a couple of people ask, because I used to knit uh, on two tangled skeins all the time, because um, I wasn't you know, having to move my hands around. Um, so I've been asked a couple of times to do a demonstration of how I knit. Um, and I had one lovely lady and I've been talking back and forth with her. Um, Cause she was trying to figure out how I held my yarn. Cause it didn't, it looked like I was holding it, uh, tensioning my yarn off my middle finger. I do okay, I do, sorry. It looked like I was throwing it from my middle finger. I do occasionally, but normally only if I've got two yarns. Um, I tension off my middle finger, I throw from my first finger. Um, I do what's called Irish cottage knitting, um, which part of it I probably learned from my grandmother because I've realized over the years that this is actually how I crocheted. And then when I got back into knitting, it was my mother-in-law who taught me and she taught me differently. Um, but how I tension it is I just wrap it around the last three fingers, kind of goes over this one. So I'm, I'm essentially just holding it against my, I'm holding it with the last two fingers and holding it against my middle finger. That gets held kind of like a pencil. And then I'm actually going to stand up and hopefully this so you can see, and then I just pull it over. Like that. And then once the knitting gets there, I just tuck my, my thumb just goes under the knitting and I keep going. So that's it. That's, that's how I knit. Um, and it's the same motion, whether I'm purling or whether I'm knitting, which on those socks has gotten me into trouble a few times because I will start, I'll just start purling <laughs> and then realize it, you know, partway through and tink back. Um, so yeah, that's how I knit. Uh, so, on to the stash. So I haven't had stash acquisitions in a while. I haven't had stash acquisitions, I don't think, since Christmas. Well, other than the yarn for Rosa's sweater. Um, so, I guess first things first, since I've had this in my hands and been playing with it. This is Needle Keeper. Um, this one is from Zigzag Stitches, who is a local to me. Um, she's from Ontario, I believe. Yes, she is. She's from she's from Ontario um, and she is on Etsy uh, I believe she has her own actually no sorry she has her own website now um, so it's zigzag stitches and this is just uh... hmm oh there it is I was trying to find something to put inside of it um, oops I just pulled out stitches. Hang on. Let me just put these back in. There we go. So you have your DPNs and you just kind of put it in and then it's got two little clips or uh, I'm thinking of the French term and I can't think of the English term. Uh, snaps on either side and it just, it holds them in. And some people you can get that, like this is one made for five and six inch needles. You can get them made up to eight inch needles. Um, the ones made for eight inch needles normally have a second, they'll have a third uh, snap on it, just so you can work with it a little better. Uh, they're great for keeping your needles together. They're actually quite good for um, magic loop, anything like that because you can just stick whatever needles you want in and cook them. Um, the other thing I got, now I got these at, I got that and this and some yarn at my new local yarn store. Uh, one of my, one of the two. Uh, 
which is in Waterloo. This is also a zigzag stitches. I've been looking for a new uh, yarn bolt. This is as much as I love my yarn basket, it's too big. So I have multiple things in there and you can't just throw a ball of yarn in and be able to pull stuff out because I have a needle sticking out, it doesn't work. So I want a yarn bolt, but I keep breaking them. So this was the solution. Um, this is a yarn basket. Um, so again, zigzag stitches. I really like it. It's been working quite well for me. As you can see, there's yarn in it. Um, yeah, so we'll do the bags. Uh, this one, bugs, is from You So and So. Uh, and it's got some inside too. And I got this from Amanda and Dee. Uh, apparently, I had a stitch marker in there. Oh well. Um, they sent this to me as kind of a, a combination housewarming and birthday gift, along with yarn. Hmm, it's green. And I think I know what I'm going to make with these. It will be socks. And I will let you all know later, once I decide. Um, so yes. Thank you, ladies. I love it. Uh, this one's padded, which I'm actually really enjoying because I've actually, I haven't been using this one as a uh, stitch bag, as a, a yarn bag. Um, I've actually been using it when I'm carrying my iPad around. So I'll throw my iPad and my wallet and my phone in here and just use it kind of as a purse because it's nice and padded. Um, so yes. And then like I said, they sent me yarn and this is um yours yeah west yorkshire spinners um so it's a uk yarn um and it is polworth no bfl it's bfl it's bfl and nylon so it is very nice and i absolutely adore well i adore the color um that's just a bag little thing for green just a little um yeah just in case nobody has noticed this my walls are the walls of my house are actually green um oddly enough while i did say yes to it i was not the one who originally picked out the green that was my landlord two thumbs up for that yeah I, before i moved in he i got a text from him and he's like yeah so i'm doing the painting and we were thinking a nice green color and I'm like, sold done um, this was actually, this was after I'd already agreed to move in, so that wasn't part of that agreement, but, um, so the other thing I got from, um, Shall We Knit is this wonderful, wonderful thing. And this is, um, from Scrumptious Pearl, uh, what is it? Oh, very luscious. I'm trying to read the writing. It's late. Uh, is the name of the colorway. She is actually on Etsy. Uh, and it's... Uh, she actually has her own site as well. Scrumptiousworld.com I've been ooing and aahing over her yarn for a while now. And... Uh, yes, no. Turns out she's local to me. Um, so... This is striped yarn. I have no, well, it'll become socks. Let's be realistic here. It's striped yarn. It's me. It'll become socks. But I saw it in Shall We Knit. And I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Oh, well. And then I did. Uh, <laughs> I was bad. I was very bad. Um, and then I was in uh, Guelph this past weekend at the other new yarn store in town. And this one is brand new because it did just open on uh, last weekend and I've completely forgotten the name. I'm sorry. I'm a horrible, horrible podcaster. Um, she doesn't actually even have her website up yet, but she has a lovely little store. And I got this stuff, which is all 
uh, it's Malbrigo. Uh, and this is their, I think it's their, is it Mecha? Yeah, this is the Mecha, which is a single ply. And as you can tell, I got three that go together. I know what I'm making out of these, but you all will have to wait and see. Um, I love Malabrigo. Absolutely love Malabrigo. Uh, oh, this is actually super washed too. I didn't realize that. So that's the the yarn. Yarn. Uh, and then I got buttons, but you'll see the buttons when they go on things because they're just plain looking ones. Um, so yeah, this, as you can probably guess, is color work. Will be color work and it will actually be a shawl. Um, and no, it is not going to be uh, one of the color factions. I've already done one. I am not doing another one. Technically, I've already done two because I finished the first one and then ripped it out <laughs> and redid it. <laughs> I made a mistake. Like I said, read patterns. It does cut down on the, the number of errors and the number of times you have to rip something out. Um, so that is, oh yeah. I knew I'd gotten something else. Um, this is Eco Andean and it's from Estelle Yarns. It will also be a shawl probably. Um, this was one of those finds that made me do a double take. Um, this is, it was $11 Canadian, it's $10.95 Canadian. Um, and it's 350 meters to 100 grams. DK. That is a lot of yardage for 10 bucks. It's an awful lot of yardage for 10 bucks. Um, so I have several skeins of this and this will become a shawl. because so I wanted something that's just plain and it'll be a ge geometric shawl. Um, I have a vague idea in my head what I'm doing. It'll be somewhat sh uh, based off of the Shetland shawls. Um, not the wedding ring shawls, but they're everyday wear ones. Uh, and then the last thing I got is another one of the uh, Perfect Colors. Uh, actually, this is not one of those. This is just uh, one of their Yang Wolves. Yao Wolves. Uh, more stuff that I picked up on sale at the store up the street. Um, what can I say? I have an idea. I finally figured out the yarn um, that I'm making the square hole socks with. That would be this because it's got nice wide stripes on the, the yarn and I like the colors. So what can I say? Um, that about sums it up because the only other kind of somewhat stash ac acquisition I've got is this. This would be my new ball winder because I think I said it last episode that I was missing my ball winder and my flat iron for my hair and I figured they were off somewhere making babies. <laughs> well, I found my flat iron it was nowhere near my ball winder. So the ball winder is still MIA so this is the new one. This is my new this is the big Bertha. Um, this is one of the, Stan, uh, the big Stanwood ones that does the uh, full pound of yarn. That will easily wind an entire ball of uh, wool mice lace yarn with room left over. Uh, not that I'm winding another one of those anytime soon because I've done that before and my arm hurt after I was done. Um, yeah, 1700 yards. Anyway, so that's about it. That's all that's new and exciting. Hopefully things will get back to normal and settle down again. Um, yes, they should, at least for the rest of this month. So that's it. That's all she wrote. I'm done. I'm out. Um, I said I will be at uh, Twist in August, but I will be at the Knitter's Frolic um, 
in, at the beginning of April and end of April end of April uh, it's not the beginning it's not the end of March um, at the beginning of April so if anyone wants to stop by and say hello I'm planning on having buttons we'll see hopefully they arrive in time uh, but yeah stop me say hello uh, send me a message on Rav whatever <laughs> uh, so I will talk to you all later and have a good week bye